What's up, Internet? We are here once again with our boy Neku. You know what that means. More awesome loot. And this time, actually on time. Because I actually managed to find stuff on time. And, uh, you know, my cat's running around wild because it's the first winter day. It's in the middle of September. Oh, we got ten months of this coming. Oh, God. So, you know, if you hear some loud noises, that's all the cat. He's cabin fever because he can't go outside. Anyway. We've got some more awesome stuff, and stuff that I'm actually excited about, so that's that's a lot of fun. Don't let my tone fool you, that's that's just how I sound. I am indeed very excited. Um, we're gonna start, however, with a bit of a surprise. Like, like, even to me, because I don't know where this came from. I, I was taking out the trash earlier today, and on my way back, I happened to find a bunch of, well, a bunch, four, uh, PS2 games crammed in my fence and I have no idea where that happened to come from like like nearest I can tell is um, a couple weeks ago a neighbor of mine said that he had some games and he'd try and find them for me show me later so maybe that's them or maybe it's just a random gift from the gods you know, it would be the first time they'd ever be doing me any favors, you know what I'm saying. But, anyway, we've got some games courtesy of the random ether that has materialized them. Starting with... NASCAR 07. And, even though I'm not big on racing, especially track-based racing games, this game, I actually have some history with. See, when I first bought uh, the PS2, uh, it, it was a family purchase for my dad, actually. He was working out of town and he needed a DVD player, and the PS2 was like the cheapest one at the time. So, we got him that, and he's a big NASCAR fan, so we decided to get him this, and like the big wheel with like the pedals, and like the gear shifter, and all that crazy nonsense I don't know why anyone would ever bother with. And, uh, well, he immediately stopped playing it after like one trip, and decided that the PS2 would be like split between me and my brother, and now it's just sort of mine. But I remember playing a DOS NASCAR game, or, or maybe it was Daytona, it, it's some driving nonsense, I don't have the greatest acumen knowing them, but um, I remember having a blast with that game, that was a game where you could skin all the cars and stuff, and I had an absolute blast playing this, so I'm hoping this is going to be similar to that game. But I do actually have some history with this game, which was kind of a neat thing to just randomly find, like especially just out of nowhere. Another thing that we got shoved in my fence, an HL08. Not, uh, not super knowledgeable about sports, to be honest. It's hockey, it's my national sport. If we don't count lacrosse or basketball or a million one other sports that I consider to be better, in, in quotes, but uh, you know, it's a free game. That was a gift from the ether. I'm not gonna turn it down. I would be a fool to do so. Next we have from the makers of dogs, horses, rock and roll horses, that's right. Uh, I have played dogs on the Game Boy Advance, I've got a gameplay video of that, uh, so I'm a little bit interested in what this could possibly be. Uh, I don't think I'm the demographic for it, for sure, for sure, but uh, you know, life sim games, they, they can be pretty fun. And if nothing else, this will be an interesting game to make a goofy video about, if nothing else. And again, it's a free gift from the void. I'm not going to turn it down. And finally, as I make a lot of noise, we have Simpsons Hit and Run, which is uh, the second of like two actually good Simpsons games. Still trying to find Road Rage, which knocks the camera. Well, that feels stupid. Um, but still looking for Road Rage. Um, that's kind of the one I want because that was basically knockoff. Uh, crazy Taxi, so much so that Sega actually sued them over it successfully, which is impressive. This is basically like knockoff Grand Theft Auto with the Simpsons characters. But uh, I, I don't think this is as fun as Road Rage. I played a, I played a bunch of Road Rage back in the day, but uh, I remember this game being a lot of fun, so I'm pretty excited to play some more of this. And again, for free? I'm not complaining. That's awesome. Okay. So next is um, 
as I readjust my camera because I'm annoyed by that. Okay, so next is going back to a theme of last episode, which is of course garage sales. We have two this time, sort of. Uh, the first one was actually a callback from um, someone we bought last time. It was uh, down the street we have that uh, independent filmmaker, actor, he was at least one of those two. I, I have the worst memory ever, I apologize. But super nice guy. Uh, he emails me and says, hey, I got these games and I want to sell them. Would you be interested? And of course, my answer would be absolutely I'm interested. That's totally down my alley. And uh, he showed me a list of, or he, he took a photo of 15 different games and I had like three of them. But I snapped up the rest. Now, bear in mind, this guy lives like two minutes away from me. Somehow this turned into like an hour-long odyssey. Because I, I had to go to the ATM, which is at the store, which is like 10 minutes away. I have to walk past their house. So I say, okay, I will be there in about 10 minutes. Can you just wait for me to hit up the ATM? And he said, yeah, no problem. So I'm at the end of my block, and one of my neighbors has a new Black Lab puppy. And it is super friendly, just enjoying the day, running around like a nut bar, and it gets away from its owner. Now, its owner is probably in her 50s, maybe 60s, that, that's probably pushing it though. Um, either way, not really someone who should be chasing down like this completely young puppy. So I haul ass after this dog, and I managed to kind of catch it, but of course, you know, it, it's a puppy, you kind of just have to sort of play with it back to its yard, and I'm doing this, but again, I'm, I've got like a 10 minute limit here, so I'm freaking out this entire time, but I managed to get it back to its yard and everything's good. But uh, I tear off to the convenience store where the ATM is, and I pass the seller's house, and they're hanging out in their backyard. They wave at me, I wave back, it's, it's super friendly and stuff, but I keep running. Uh, about 20 seconds away from the um, the the bodega, as it were. Um, I just learned that word. I'm, I'm rather proud I got to use it today. Um, it starts spitting. Like, just enough moisture being hurled at you from this guy so that you notice it. And it's like, well, okay, I, I might be a little bit damp. No big deal. I'm going to get some games. This is going to be great. I walk in, and the ATM is literally right at the door. So I turn to the ATM. I like punch in my pin, I get my money, literally like less than 30 seconds, turn around to leave, I shit you not, it turned into like a torrential flood rainstorm. Like I saw people actually getting knocked down by the wind and water. It was so bad that when I got home, I had to actually throw up my shoes because they were just permanently destroyed from the water damage. It was that bad. But the seller was nice enough to wait for me a couple minutes later and I actually did manage to get some games. So let's take a look. Uh, we have Need for Speed 2, in fact. Uh, I believe I played the first Need for Speed uh, with my uncle on DOS, I believe? Uh, you played as a red car chasing, I think, a yellow car down a, I want to say, procedurally generated road. And then sometimes, like, police would catch up to you and you had to, like, outrun them as well. I had an absolute blast playing that. And I'm absolutely hoping this is basically going to be the exact same game as that because I have such fond memories of that thing I only did once. Like that game was a lot of fun. And of course everything they sold us like last time was about two dollars so you know I could afford it even you know if it wasn't what I wanted but it's something I didn't have which means it's going to be good for the show's library moving forward. Next we have Cool Borders 2. I don't have a lot of PS1 games, so to add this to the collection is always nice. Sports game, so it's not super down my alley, but this was actually a game my girlfriend and I tried to get a bunch of times through Facebook. And to finally get a copy, well, that's, that's just nice. And it's apparently the ultimate snowboarding experience. As long as you don't count, like, Snowboard Kids or, like, any of the uh, SSX games, possibly. But uh, again, it's, it's a game that I didn't have, so having it's good. It makes my very small PS1 library a little bigger. And I've heard great things about Cool Borders, so I'm excited. All right, next we have Driver. You are the wheel man. Uh, this is actually a game I, it was either this or the sequel that I have experience with, but 
A family friend of mine had a PS1, and I got to visit them maybe once or twice a year. They had uh, Sled Storm, they had this game called Rogue Trip, which was like a combination of Twisted Metal and Crazy Taxi. That game is awesome, I gotta find a copy. Um, and then they either had this or the sequel. And I remember this game being a pretty awesome game because it was like an open world, sort of Grand Theft Auto driving game where you had to like outrun the police and stuff. It was a lot of fun. And I think you play as an undercover cop. Uh, the other thing I know about this game is quite famously this has like the absolute... I, I'm trying to touch the viewfinder to autofocus and that doesn't work when you're doing it in front of the camera. Um, but this has like the worst tutorial ever. They basically just set you up in a parking garage, they say go, you have a 60 second time limit to complete like this just list of completely like arbitrary vague ideas of concepts. If you hit anything twice you like blow up and you have to start over and unless you actually manage to do it under this time limit without any explanation as to what's going on or what you need to do, you can't start the game. Uh, this game's kind of famous for its terrible start, but uh, and it's abysmal third entry, but I've heard the first one, once you get past that's pretty good. Alright, next we have HBO Boxing. This is, without a doubt, the, the second boxing game I own, next to Funky Head Boxers on the Saturn, which I bought for a What the Hell Is video that I never bothered making. Um, well, the day's not over yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do that yet. But uh, it's certainly boxing. And for two bucks, adding it to the collection, not a bad idea. Next we have True Crime, New York City. I have seen the sequel to this a lot more in stores, uh, True Crime LA. And I played what was originally going to be the third game of the series, True Crime Hong Kong, which we now know as Sleeping Dogs, which I thought was okay. You, it's sort of a Grand Theft Auto, you play as a criminal thing, but as the badge on your shirt says, you are actually an undercover police officer. And it's basically an open world uh, destruction, crime fest, it's a neat idea. But, uh, you know, it's one I didn't have, and again, for a cheap price, I can add it to my collection, which will be a video in the future. Next we have something that connects pretty well to the last episode. Jam Pack, Volume 13 Demo Disc. I still want to do more Let's Plays with Demo Disc, but I still need to get, you know, more than three. But, you know, this will help get us on there. Plus we get ten hot new games, Shadow of the Colossus, Slide 3, Honor Among Thieves, Jack X Combat Racing, Ratchet Deadlocked, Soul Calibur 3, Burnout Revenge, Chronicles of Narnia, I'm Getting Hiccups, Genji, Dawn of the Blade, Dawn of the Samurai, Dawn of the Blade was a different game I think, I want to play that, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, I think I have that on Xbox, and Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood, and we've got plenty of different things here, brought to you by PlayStation Underground, and it looks like a lot of fun. Pretty excited for some of these games. That one looks definitely a lot interesting, so does that. Uh, I have those Ratchets, Sly Cooper, and Jack collections. I don't think any of them are on those collections, and those are on my PS3, which I can't actually play right now because of HDCP. Um, fun story. When I started this channel and I started doing PS3 stuff, it was through this fantastic little uh, component cable I bought at GameStop back before they just sold Funko Pop figures where you could connect it to both your Xbox 360, Wii, and PS3 all at once and had like a built-in switcher and uh, that was great cable. Unfortunately when my TV broke about a year ago uh, I got this new TV, 50, 55, something like that. It was a huge TV, super super cheap but it didn't have component inputs, just HDMI. And while my PS3 can use HDMI, it has HDCP, so I can't actually record it. And I bought several HDCP bypass devices, splitters, the whatnot. And even though I bought a couple dozen of them, none of them seem to work. So if, if anyone actually has suggestions or something how to get past that, let me know. Because I really want to get back to PS3 stuff. I've got a lot of it. Alright, next is a game I'm super excited about. Project Snowblind. This game is a lot like Tetris, not in terms of gameplay, obviously, but in the sense that I have bought this game about four dozen times, and it's not a rare or expensive game, you can usually find it for like two bucks pretty easily, but despite the fact I've bought this like 25, 26, 50 times at this point, 
I've never actually gotten a copy. <laughs> They either came without discs, or the discs didn't work, or it was a different game altogether. Damn you, Madagascar, the video game. <laughs> but now I have a copy of this. And this is an actually pretty interesting game from what I heard. I did a little bit of research on this. Apparently this was originally going to be the third Deus Ex game. But Deus Ex 2 happened and no one liked it, so um, they instead of calling it like Deus Ex Tribes or whatever it was originally going to call it, they called it... Um, Project Snowblind, and they made it more of a straight-on first-person shooter. But I've always really wanted to play this. I, I'm super excited to give it a shot. That's that's one that's that's been sitting around for a while that I've wanted to play. And now I have a copy. All right, next we have a game I'm a little less enthusiastic about. Alone in the Dark. Uh, like everything else here, it was two bucks, and that would probably be about as much as I'd want to pay for this game. Uh, never played this game, but it's infamous for being not particularly good and going against kind of the established canon of the series, which is unfortunate. Uh, I hear it has some really nice fire effects, which is like the one positive I've heard a lot of people saying. Uh, it's got some weird features as well. If I recall, it's done like DVD style, so if you don't like a chapter, you can skip ahead through the story for for whatever reason. Yeah, never get stuck. DVD style, chapter select, lets everyone reach the climax. Whether you want to or not, you've got the option, I guess. <laughs> Alright, next we have Outlaw Volleyball. It's certainly one of two volleyball games I now own. And and when I was thinking about that, I realized through my other volleyball game, of course, you know, if you want a triple A volleyball title, at this point all you have is the Dead or Alive Extreme games. <laughs> that's that's kind of depressing, isn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, I've got the second one, and I bought that just because I wanted an example of a bad game. I think the only thing about that that I liked was it had kind of an interesting wave race style game to it, but uh, not, a, not a good game. I'm not big on volleyball, but, uh, you know, here's, here's a volleyball game. It was cheap, and it's something we can talk about later. And finally, for this one guy, probably the thing I was most excited about, if not for, you know, Project Snowblind or Jam Pack, Universe at War a Wrath Assault because I like to think I'm pretty well versed in, you know, the one thing I'm actually kind of good at in life, which is knowing stuff about video games. I have never heard of this game. I mean, looking at the back and, and doing a little bit of research, apparently it's a console-based RTS, which is a terrifying concept alone, but, you know, it, it's got giant robots, it's got missiles, it, I mean, how can you go wrong with this? I, I don't see how you can. So I'm pretty excited about this guy. And that's all we got from that uh, particular seller. Nice guy. Really appreciate the email back. And you know, if he ever wants to sell any more games, especially it's, you know, two bucks each, I will jump on that for sure. Uh, I'm going to have to swap out my memory card and probably charge my battery. So the, the setup might be a little bit. I'm going to clean this off. And then we're going to talk about probably the last big or maybe even the last garage sale of the year because it's snowing right now and also it was a pretty big one so uh, hold on to your hats I'll be right back and we're back with more garage sale nonsense hopefully with enough battery to get through all this I did charge it before we started this and it's already dead that's not uh, not a good sign anyway this was kind of like the biggest garage sale and probably the last one like I said and uh, I'm not even sure it was necessarily a garage sale. On the same street, I did see a sign for an estate sale, so that might have been the same thing, I'm not sure. But uh, I went up to this house, and it was a pretty thin house from what I remember, but you had to walk through like the side of the house, which was like this giant driveway. And as I walked up to the backyard, I saw nothing but like power tools and stuff to like build houses with and stuff, nothing for me. And uh, in the backyard, I saw like a million and one signs that all said, you know, come on in. We got more stuff inside. Yep, you can absolutely come on in. You bet. I'm pretty sure whoever wrote those signs was getting paid by the word because there were kind of a lot of them. But as I entered the house, this young man, probably a little younger than me, walked to my left past me and, and left the house. And as they left, they shouted, now until I get back, don't sell my games. And you know at that point that my eyes were darting around the entire place like it was on. And uh, the, the two other adults in there, I, I think they were his parents or something, they said, oh, you're totally the guy we're looking for. We're, we're looking for some guy to buy the games. So uh, 
I, I kind of had to wait a little bit till the guy came back, and uh, there was quite a few games. There were some on the ground. There were some in a box. There was like a box of controllers. There's an N64 set being set up. A lot of stuff. Um, I, I kind of asked, you know, what sort of price are you looking for for the games? I think they said something like two bucks each, and and you know, I just said, okay, how much do you want for all of it? And you say this for two reasons. First, you know, pro tips with Fury is it helps you skip math because math is the worst. But second of all, when you buy things in a huge bundle like this, it tends to afford a bit of a discount. You know, because, you know, you're the guy, you're there willing to purchase all of it. You know, provided it's for a good price. And uh, I, I think I ended up getting away with like each game being like 50 cents or something like that. Like I bought a pretty big sum. I bought almost everything they had. And I think we ended up kind of like agreeing on something like $40 for all the games. So we're gonna start with, I guess what we'll call you know, politely the chaff, because, you know, these are good games, but I either have them or they're just not for me. So, starting out, we have Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. I actually already have this game. Uh, I got it on the P, or on the PS3, the Xbox original, and it's a military shooter. Um, a family friend was throwing out a bunch of DVDs and they actually threw out a bunch of games. I actually had multiple games in their cases too to conserve space or something. And my mom saw this and she rescued them and brought them to me. So I actually already had this. So this will be in the trade bin for anyone who wants it. Uh, next we have Madden 07 because Madden shaking hand. Uh, it, it's sport ball. It's uh, not my sort of thing, and it's sport ball that's not stylized or anything, so I'm not sure that's necessarily for me. Uh, next we have, in similar vein, NHL 2K10. And someone who's very angry that they're on the cover of NHL 2K10, Alex Bukovichkin, however, however you're supposed to pronounce that, I think that's an 8, I think that's their name. This guy, he's not happy to be on Madden's uh, um, NHL cousin because, let's just be honest, NHL games are like the Madden of NHL, obviously, because sports. Uh, next we have Hot Shots Golf 4. That's the joke. Did you, did you see the funny joke? Because that's a funny joke. Uh, this is the fourth Hot Shots Golf game. I'm still trying to get the Super Swing Golf games on the Wii because, of course, those are the... Uh, Pena Fantasy Golf Games, there's two of them. Still trying to get them. Uh, I don't have this, but this box actually contained two copies. So I actually already have this <laughs> in here. So, so this one's also getting put up for trades for those who want it. All right, next we have HL 2K8. And uh, this is awful familiar. I just got this for free today. <laughs> So, you know, if you want sports, there's some more sports. I remember this game from last time because it's wrestling and I don't have a lot of desire to have wrestling games because wrestling really isn't my jam. But uh, I've, I've got another copy of that as well. We've got more NHL because hockey and patriotism or, or some, some nonsense. Uh, next we have the follow-up. Now this guy, he, he doesn't look so angry to be on the NHL cover, he just looks more confused and like he wants to vomit. But, um, you know, I, I guess being on the NHL cover will do that to you. Alright, next we have, and actually a, a really good game, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. But I have the Xbox version and the PC version, but if you want a Grand Theft Auto, I've got this one and I got a spare copy if you want to trade for it. This if not being the best Grand Theft Auto, certainly has the best soundtrack, because let's just be honest, Flock of Seagulls on the soundtrack makes everything the best iteration of everything. I'm, I'm very excited about this. Next we have another copy, Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. I have three copies of this game now. <laughs> I'm not sure I wanted one copy of these. Also, last time when it was in that red cover, apparently that's like a prototype cover, so maybe that was a first print, who knows. But uh, if you want Gran Turismo 3, I've got a couple of copies. Totally yours if you want to trade. Next we have a game that uh, I highly recommend you trade for, which is Devil May Cry 3. 
Dante's Awakening Special Edition, which means it comes with Virgil mode, and it's been made a lot easier for wimps. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Devil May Cry. It is debatably the best Devil May Cry game. I know the new one is has been getting a lot of reviews that are pretty rave. I like the original possibly best. I think this one plays best, and it has one of the most amazing opening cutscenes ever, and an amazing soundtrack, but honestly, I, I kind of like the original better in some regards. I, I think it just it, it was a better game, in my opinion. Next we have HL08. Again, I'm pretty sure I actually already own this game. <laughs> and again, someone just looking like, they're like, why am I on this cover? Do, do you want me to be on this cover? You better be paying a lot because I'm gonna look angry and like I wanna vomit. That's that's what being on an NHL cover will do to you, I guess. All right, next we have more wrestling. Yeah. See, they don't look like they wanna vomit. They look like they're having a good time. I'm not sure I'd look like I was having a good time if I was playing wrestling, because wrestling's not my jam. All right, next we have another game I have. Like all these, we have Lord of the Rings Two Towers. Again, I'm not sure if it was Two Towers or the third one, but I remember playing one of these games and absolutely hating it. Uh, I've got two copies of this, though, so, you know, it, it's there for trades if someone wants it. All right, next is, again, a good game that I would recommend you trade for, Sonic Generations. I have the PS3 version, though. Although I can't play my PS3 version because, like we talked about, HDCP because Sony is idiots. Um, still, it's a good game, although I don't think it sort of really does what its slates, what its slated goal is, because, you know, it's kind of like classic Sonic plays 2D, 3D Sonic plays 3D, except 90% of the time 3D Sonic is also playing 2D. It's a good game, though. Uh, if you don't think about, you know, Freedom Planet or Sonic Mania, it really is the only good Sonic game to have come out of anything since Sonic Adventure 2. That game's great. All right, next we have Final Fantasy 10-B. Uh, I have this digitally already, not that I really want it. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's more Final Fantasy. Oh, but we can't forget Final Fantasy 13. I might have called that 10-B, I meant 13-B. It, it's the one with lightning. The one that I made like a 40 minute rant video about that I can't post because Square Enix. <laughs> Uh, but you gotta understand, I'm, I'm the guy who says there hasn't been a good Final Fantasy since 6. And, and I stand by that, with the exception of the Game Boy Advance Tactics Ogre spin-off. And, and it's just because they have gotten really bad, and I think these games are sort of the epitome of it, really. Uh, they don't have the third one, which is the only one I haven't played. Again, not that I want to, but still. Uh, next we have Irath Defense Force 2017. This, this is one of the best Xbox 360 games. I love this game with a passion, it is great. You need to own a copy, and I already do, so that one can be up for trades. Next we have even more wrestling, because yeah! Also, once again, not looking like he wants to vomit. These guys know how to take a cover photo. Or the cover photo isn't cursing the person who's getting the photo of. All right, next we have Guitar Hero. I don't own anything Guitar Hero related. Like, like I, well, as of last video, I own like 12 Guitar Hero games, but I don't have any peripherals, nor do I have any sense of rhythm or music, so none of this does me any good. Uh, next we have Connect Adventures. I actually don't have this game, but I don't have the Xbox 360 Connect, which kind of renders owning this a little bit moot. And finally, again, we got an awesome game, but I already own it. Burnout Paradise. Great game. It's backwards compatible on the Xbox One as well. I think it's a absolute must own game, especially if you like driving games that aren't confined to a set course, because that's this game. This game is totally my jam. Got a soundtrack with Bees, Guns N' Roses, uh, Alice in Chains, as well as the radio DJ being played by Hiro Yui himself. Uh, good old Mark Hildreth. Wish he'd come back and play more Gundam characters, but still, you know, this is a great game. And I've got a spare going in the box of trades. Now I'm going to clear this off and we're going to look at what I would consider, I guess, again, the good stuff. And we're back with 
the good stuff. Well, good's a strong word. It's the stuff I didn't have that was interesting. Uh, we're going to start with the only GameCube game in the box, which I'm a little upset about because, you know, there's quite a few GameCube games I still need. But we have Second Sight by Codemasters. I've seen this in a couple of stores, you know, back when you could buy GameCube games in stores. But I didn't really have a lot of interest in it because I wasn't really big into FPS games until I played Metroid Prime, honestly, and even then that's not really that. But I think this is one of like those uh, sort of FPS horror style games. I think there's like some psychic powers and like some camera nonsense where you get to see from like the villain's perspective. Or I might be thinking of one of the Clive Barker games or, or Siren. I haven't played any of those either. I'm a wimp when it comes to horror. But maybe this will help get me a little bit better. Uh, next we have some 360 games. We have Battle Stations Midway. It's a military thing? But, uh, you know, you can help support the troops with a 30-day discount card trial offer inside, I guess? Uh, it, it looks like there's some plain stuff. I, I do like planes, but... Uh, I, I don't know, this looks like a multiplayer sort of military thing. Not my bag, but you know, it's, it's a video if nothing else. Next we have a game I'm super excited about. Ninja Blade. Uh, this is a game that was never on my list, but it was always on my periphery. And you know, I, every time I saw it, they just wanted a little bit too much for it. This is sort of like a knockoff Ninja Gaiden of sorts, where he plays a ninja who looks like he's wearing some kind of jock strap over his face, but uh, you know, it, it's a high-speed ninja action game with ninja vision, apparently. And that's exciting. I, I've been wanting to play that one for a while, so to get that for a good price, that makes me happy. Next we have Call of Juarez. I actually don't know too much about this. I know it's an FPS set in the West. Um, I think, judging by the title, it's a spin-off of Call of Duty, but I, I'm not even honestly sure about that. If you know, let me know, because that, that's something I've been curious about for a while. But, uh, you know, I know there's a couple of these games. I'm not sure any of them were super well received. But, you know, it, it's a video to talk about, certainly. Uh, next we have the first edition, although I think all the bonus stuff's already been used because it's digital, but uh, Saints Row, Get Out of Hell. And with this, I will only have not played the original Saints Row. Uh, I'm a big fan of Saints Row 2. I, I think it's one of the best open world games of the generation. Uh, obviously behind like Just Cause 2, obviously. But um, I, I didn't really like how Saints Row 3 went in terms of direction. Like I, I kind of liked how stylized it was, but I thought the world was really bland. Like it looked nice, but no matter where you went, it was like just city or suburbs. Whereas Saints Row 2 had so much in terms of like visual personality with every area you went to and had tons of secrets which Saints Row 3 just never had um, and, and then of course they got sort of sucked into the vortex of trying to be as wacky as possible and well I think uh, Saints Row 3 had an amazing opening and kind of ran with it Saints Row 4 was just kind of bland to me so I, I'm not sure how to feel about this but uh, that's that's one of the Saints Row games I haven't played next we have N3 Roman numeral 2 99 Nights 2. Um, that, that's a terrible way to like design a name for something. But I have played the original 99 Nights. It was sort of a Dynasty Warrior sort of clone, although you could equip different weapons. And I, if I recall, there were some um, RPG mechanics. And I don't like Dynasty Warrior games all that much. I played uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam, and I, I found that to be really boring. I played the Nintendo fan wank fest that was uh, Hyrule Warriors to be really bad. Um, I thought the first 99 Nights was actually okay though. And I think the seller was actually quite a fan of those Dynasty Warriors games because there's a couple sort of in there. Next we have another one, Blade Storm: The Hundred Years War. I actually have history with this game, kind of. Um, the first time I ever came into contact with the PS3 was with the demo to this game. Uh, I, I didn't know what it was at the time, um, but I went to a family friend's house, and it's the uh, same family friend who bought my Banjo-Kazooie never returned it. Not that I'm still bitter about that. Damn it, I want my Banjo-Kazooie back. Um, but uh, he was playing the demo to this, and it looked amazing. It, it, it's not entirely like a Dynasty Warriors style game. It's actually more of a strategy game that just involves mowing down a lot of people. 
but uh, it's an interesting game and I'm excited to be able to play this finally because it had a pretty big uh, mark on my life just by being the thing that I knew the PS3 from. Uh, next we got some PS2 stuff. Gun. Uh, my uncle lent me this once. It's, uh, you know, when uh, Red Dead Redemption first came out, I thought it was a sequel to this. And it is a sequel, but not to this. But it's a uh, Wild West shooter. And I remember thinking it was okay, but honestly, I don't think I gave it as much of a chance as I should have. So to get a copy of this, that actually makes me really, really happy. Uh, next we have Samurai Warriors. Uh, like I said, I'm not the biggest Dynasty Warriors fan ever, especially considering that uh, Koei, these guys down here who you can't see because of the lighting, um, they made a lot of really good strategy games that they weren't visually impressive or anything, but they were amazing. You know, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Nobunaga's Ambition, Inindo, um, Horizon on, on the Super Nintendo, those were all amazing games, and then they just sort of made Dynasty Warriors over and over and over and over. And it's not even Dynasty Warriors, it's Dynasty Warriors 2. The first Dynasty Warriors was a fighting game, but uh, I've been told out of all of them, Samurai Warriors is sort of the most fun to play. So I'm, I'm pensive, but I'm a little excited, I guess. Uh, next we have Samurai Warriors 2, Empire. Except that's Dynasty Warriors 5, Empires. I don't think these are the same games, but I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> um, but as I understand, the Empire's versions of these Dynasty Warriors games tries to bring back the strategy elements on top of Dynasty Warriors. So that's actually kind of interesting. I kind of wish it was the Samurai Warriors once the Dynasty Warriors, but you know, it was within my price range. I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, next we have Max Payne. $4.99 quality guaranteed. The fall of Max Payne. Actually, this is Max Payne 2. Um, I played a little bit of the first Max Payne. It was sort of the game that I don't think it introduced, but it popularized bullet time. And I, I thought it was kind of a fun, sort of John Wooey sort of experience. Um, so I'm kind of excited to play this. I, I've heard that 2 is the best one. Um, I, I saw 3, and I have absolutely no interest in 3, but uh, you know, that one's kind of neat. Uh, next we have 499 blockbuster quality guaranteed barbarian. I don't know what this game is. I mean, looking at the back, it looks like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and and part of it looks kind of like a RPG and like a brawler. Um, the the giant Titus logo over here does not uh, fill me with confidence though, because Titus has never made anything of value ever. But, uh, you know, it's something I've never heard of, so that is, again, something very exciting for me. Uh, next we have Destroy All Humans, One Giant Step on Mankind. I, I'm not sure if it's a remake or it's a new game entirely, but there's a new Destroy All Humans out there. This game, at, at least the one I played, which was on the 360, which I've been told is the worst one, was an absolute blast. Like, it, it's a giant... Uh, goofy plot sci-fi sort of sandbox destruction fest that's that's definitely a spoof on the time period it takes place in that is an absolute blast I'm glad I got that next we have Star Wars the Clone Wars Republic Heroes based on the cartoon I can't stand um, I know this came out on the Wii and PC I didn't know it came out on the PS2 though but uh, it's it's based on the cartoon that had a lot of really excellent episodes centered around the clone troopers but every episode with Jedi was just garbage and and you know the clone troopers were amazing because it was the fantastic uh, D Bradley Baker playing all the clone troopers and he had to affect like the same voice for all the characters because they're all of course clones they're not the same person and yet he had to make them all sound unique and different and and that's what made that show so great and then that was like 2% of the episodes, and also they introduced this apprentice character who was awful. <laughs> and and then they made an awesome sequel to this that didn't have that apprentice character. Until they added it and ruined that for me. Uh, next we have Star Wars Battlefront. I played the sequel to this. I had a blast with it. In fact, I, I got this like huge mod pack for the PC version for the sequel of this, which added a bunch of nonsense. 
Um, I remember the sequel being an absolute blast. I'm excited to play the original. That's that's going to be good for me, I think. Uh, next we have Naruto Ultimate Ninja 2. I don't know a lot about Naruto. I, I think this is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Uh, I watched like the first several episodes of the first arc and then I realized like Dragon Ball if we were like 50 episodes in and nothing was going on so I just kind of gave up. I know a lot of people really like Naruto though so that's kind of exciting. Uh, next we have a kind of falling apart uh, Medal of Honor collection which has three Medal of Honor games on here that we are not focusing on because focusing is difficult. Let's see if I can fix that. Um, you know, it, it's military shooters. It's not really my sort of thing, but you know, it's three more games for the collection, four videos in the future. Next we have, as we've already shown, the funny joke, Hot Shots Golf 4. You get it yet? It's still a funny joke. Uh, it's a golf game. It's one I don't have, so that's kind of nice. Uh, next we have B-Boy. I think this is a rhythm game of some kind? I, I don't know what this is. Uh, it seems to feature breakdancing and 40 B-Boy characters, whatever that means. Uh, I, I don't know what B-Boys are, but uh, apparently this has a lot of them. Uh, next we have a game that might actually surprise a lot of people. God of War. I have never played a God of War game. I have played uh, the Devil May Cry games, which inspired God of War, and I played the excellent Rising Xan that inspired both of those, and I love Rising Xan, but uh, never got into the original God of War, or any of its offshoots. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I kind of wanted the PS3 collection, but I mean, right now I can't play it anyway, so to have this is pretty nice. Uh, it's, it's your standard Rising Xan clone of beating people up, building up a combo, and looking as stylish as possible. And that's kind of a neat concept for a game. It's not the one that originated it, as a lot of people like to call him, because of course Rising Zen happened, but it's, it's very cool. Next we have four games I am unbelievably excited about. We have Kessen. This was, I don't know about North America, because again, I didn't have a PS2 at the time, but this was a ridiculously important game in Japan. This was I don't think it was launch, but it was close to launch. But more importantly, this was like the game that was gonna show the world how amazing the PS2's like visual output was. Like this was the thing that was gonna put the PS2 on the map. It is a Koei uh, strategy game back before they started reselling Dynasty Warriors 2 over and over and again. And uh, you know, this game I'm really excited to get. I It's not a hard to find or expensive game, but I've just never seen it copy. And, you know, I, I do like Koei strategy games, even though I'm not that big into strategy games. So to have that makes me smile. To follow that up, Kessen 3. Although we don't have two, which I'm a little upset about. You know, getting the trilogy would be nice. Uh, it's, it's more Koei strategy. Apparently there's new action, which might, uh, might get a little bit more action-y, which isn't necessarily bad, but it also means that it's still awesome strategy, which is, you know, kind of what I want, because... Please stop selling Dynasty Warriors, Koei. Just, just make good things again. <laughs> Please. Can I get a sequel to a Nindo? That would be nice. But uh, let's let's not stop that awesome Koei strategy game train because we got Romance of the Three Kingdoms 9. Romance of the Three Kingdoms games tend to be really hard to find. Uh, I, I have not had any luck finding any of them and I've wanted to collect these for a while because again, it's Koei strategy, it's uh, Koshibusawa at his best, making awesome strategy games for his company, and um, you know, this is my intro to the series. I, I want to collect the rest, but uh, they're hard to find and kind of expensive for the most part, so getting these along with Kessen has already made this, this little find totally worth it. But uh, yeah, so we got awesome strategy, but that doesn't end because we have Romance of the Three Kingdoms 11. Hell yeah, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. More awesome Chinese lit turned into badass strategy games. That makes me very, very happy. I'm, I'm very excited for this. Um, that That is the end of the PS2 stuff. Our desk is a little bit uh, buried right now, so I'm gonna clean it off and I'll be back in a sec.
All right, now we're here with probably the next thing that made me super excited about this place, PlayStation games. First we have Jeremy Regrath, Supercross, 98. Um, it's a biking game, I, I guess? I'm, I'm gonna hold that off screen because I'm doing this backwards, clearly. Uh, I don't know much about it though. It's, it's super cross, I guess. Uh, next we have Disney's Dinosaur. Uh, I have the Game Boy Color version of this. I'm gonna drop that. And for whatever reason, my gameplay video of that is one of my most popular videos for reasons I cannot begin to fathom. But, uh, you know, it, it's based on a movie I have never seen. But it's Disney's Dinosaur. Next, we have... As I pick it off the ground and clean it up a little bit. These cases are slippery. Uh, we have Mission Impossible. Which, as I understand, is like a knockoff siphon filter meets knockoff Metal Gear. Sorry, I knockoff Tom Cruise. Sure, why not? Uh, next we get into the stuff to actually get excited about. Twisted Metal 4. Uh, I, I've only played one Twisted Metal game. It was, uh, I want to say Twisted Metal Black. It was the PS2 one I downloaded onto my PS3 and I thought it controlled really weird, but um, You know, it, it's car combat and a lot of people swear by this series. So that's that's really cool that I have this uh, Next we have a game. I'm super excited about Dino Crisis Resident Evil meets Velociraptors on two discs hell yeah and uh, Raw Instinct takes over because dinosaurs Blah. Again, really exciting. And now we get to the number one thing I was most excited about in this entire set. Wild 9. Torture Your Enemies by the lovely shiny people of Shiny Entertainment. Uh, these same guys who made Earthworm Jim. And this is basically like a 2.5D platformer where you've got a character with like an electro whip and you have to use that whip to manipulate characters and enemies and objects around the world. Really exciting. I've been trying to get this game for years. This is, you know, those strategy games were awesome, but this was the highlight of my purchase. Unfortunately, there are no discs. in the cases. So that kind of sucks. Uh, like I said, I, I can live without Dinosaur. I can you know, kind of live without Mission Impossible. But uh, Twisted Metal, that one hurts. Dino Crisis definitely hurts. Wild 9, that one is kind of sort of devastating to me. But, you know, it, it's it comes with the ter territory of garage sales. Sometimes, you know, you find something awesome. Other times, you end up buying a copy of Tetris World and end up with Madagascar the video game. And it ends up on your game of the year list of worst games ever. Even if you've never played it because why would someone do that? Seriously, just check your cases, people. Really bitter about that. On the bright side though, you know, if I ever find like a disc only copy of any of these, they'll be complete. So, uh, silver linings, I guess. Uh, next we have the opposite of these, these are discs without cases. We have Whiplash, which apparently is a rabbit tied to a weasel on the Xbox. This looks like a bad mascot platformer. I love playing bad mascot platformers. They're always so interesting. I, I swear, I've played every single one on the N64. So e even if they're not great, they're always interesting. Next we have Oddworld, Munch's Odyssey. I've not actually played any of the Oddworld games, and I really want to. Um, so I guess this will be my entry point. Next we have X-Men Legends. This is a top-down sort of Diablo-style game. I believe this was the thing that created the, what is it, uh, Marvel Universe United? Marvel United, whatever. Uh, there's a big series of games that a lot of people rave about that are based off that that I've never played. Uh, next we have Torque, the prehistoric punk. Uh, again, it looks like a bad Me Too platformer. I am so in on this. Uh, next we have Rebel Raiders, Operation Nighthawk. 
Now, I'm a big fan of arcade flight sims, uh, all the way back to TIE Fighter on the PC. My, my uncle got me into that, got me into, like, um, you know, Strike Eagle, all that sort of stuff. That's actually where my handle came from, you know. I knew an actual, uh, uh, through my uncle, we, we knew, like, an actual, like, uh, military, like, uh, scenario planner, and he actually got a simulation done in something similar to that, where he had created a... Uh, event that was based on a real life event, and I was the only one who could figure it out. Just some kid playing a video game, and uh, that's how I got the title Solo Wing, based on a real life event. And and all things cyclical. Going back to me loving arcade flight sims, another great arcade flight sim, Ace Combat. They have a character based exactly on that. He has my exact color scheme. They based the character off me. How awesome is that? You know, it only took 15 years after I did it, and you know, like 10 years after the real guy did it. Still pretty cool. Uh, next we have Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. I've not played any of these games, so this is pretty cool. Uh, next we have a game I've actually reviewed, Ratchet and Clank. Starring uh, Davy Day as Clank. I didn't even know that back when I reviewed it. Seriously, if he had made some sort of sarcastic, condescending statement like, yes, I, I would know, because I watched a lot of uh, Beasties. Where he was Megatron and he was awesome, but no. Uh, next we have the excellent Shadow of Rome with awkward stealth mechanics that only sometimes work, but still, it's a very cool game. I reviewed that earlier this year. Uh, next we've got a game I don't care too much about, but we've got Bicycle Casino includes Texas Hold'em. Uh, the only thing I know about Texas Hold'em and, and any form of poker is never look at your cards and go all in from the start and it freaks everyone out. That, that's how you play that game well. And finally, we have Prism Chapter 1, The Dark Unicorn. I don't know if Prism is the Dark Unicorn, or this guy, or whatever this is supposed to be. I think this might actually be a tie-in with Neopets, because I know there was one around this time. Don't know what this game is, but uh, it's, it's interesting. And I got all of that for about $40, and again, not having Wild Nine, that kind of kills it, but we're not done just yet. Because, like I said, they had a set with an N64. It had uh, five games, had two controllers, all the cables and everything, it was great. I asked them, you know, how much do you want for it? They said $50, and for that, that's not a horrible price, but I already have two N64s that are region free, so I didn't really need that, but there were two games they had that I really wanted as well as, uh, you know, an extra N64 controller because the control sticks on those are garbage. I've heard you can replace them with GameCube ones. I don't have an extra GameCube controller to try someday. Someday, though, I will. But, uh, you know, I, I approached them and I said, well, you know, would you be willing to sell these to me for a decent price? And, and they pulled out one of the games and said, well, this one game, well, it would sell for about $30 alone. And, you know, I, I didn't want to be a dick or anything, but, you know, at times like that, you kind of just have to say, well, yeah, you could sell for eBay prices, but you might as well go to eBay, and then you have to wait for someone to actually buy it. And I'm here with cash on hand. Maybe don't do that. I, I mean, as a tangent, a couple years ago, I saw someone sell a NES cart of Cowboy Kid with, like, built into a plaque that says, $800 firm, I saw this sell on eBay two days ago for that price, not a penny less. <laughs> and it's like, if you're doing that, that's great. Don't do it at a garage sale. It's unrealistic, you know. Not to be an asshole, but you got to temper your realism a little bit. So I asked, okay, well, look, you've got a whole N64. I know you want to sell this as a set. I just want two games and a controller. You'll still have one controller to complete the set, plus three games. I said, all right, I'll tell you what, if you buy that and, and some other stuff, we'll, we'll sell it all for $30. And I said, yeah, sure. So... Let's, let's start with Rayman 2, The Great Escape. Uh, you might recall how I said I played a lot of bad platformers. This one I remember being one of the worst on the N64, right up there with like Starshot and Glover. Uh, I, I remember the bad spin-off of this made by the same team called Tonic Trouble actually being better. I actually want to play Tonic Trouble again. But uh, this game made me want to never play Rayman. Like this was my intro to Rayman and I hated it. So getting this now, I'm, I'm a little worried, but I'm excited to give it a second try. 
And we have, for the other game, a bit of a beaten up label, but we have Vigilante 8, Second Defense. And uh, I actually have a bit of history with this game. And, and by a bit, I mean I played this for 23 seconds. Um, a couple years ago, I went to this pawn shop that had a N64 combination memory card rumble pack, because I've never had a rumble pack and my memory card is old and full and I still need both of those things. And uh, they had to pick a game that had rumble and they had this. And I played it for a few minutes and I thought it was a lot of fun, but their rumble pack thing didn't work. And when I left, I, I was kicking myself for not getting this, because I thought it was a very interesting game. It's, it's a racing meets car combat sort of deal. It's a very neat game. Still need the first one, but uh, I'm really proud that I have a copy of that. All right, so next we have one of the N64 controllers. It was the one that had the most play in the stick. Actually, it has a lot of play in the stick, which is nice. Uh, this will be a nice sort of stopgap measure until I can, you know, get a another GameCube controller and try and build a Franken controller that works. Still, uh, it's always important to have N64 controllers because Nintendo, your N64 controllers, especially their sticks, were awful. Also, we only have two hands. We're not Octopi. Fix that shit. Now, included with that was some PS2 stuff because I, I saw they had some controllers and I, I kind of threw that in with the deal for $30. I said, well, you know, I... PS2 controllers were really abundant back in the day. Like, I, I started PS2 with, like, 2007 to 2010. Some point in there's where I started playing PS2. And at that point, like, my brother had so many friends over that brought their PS2 controllers, and they always brought, like, three or four, because they were always garbage. Like, they always had, like, broken shoulder buttons. Or... Thanks their camera for stopping recording there. Anyway, they always had broken shoulder buttons or like they just had a broken prong or like the sticks were busted or, or their or their uh, camera, their, their cords were completely frayed. So I bought a box of these. I only needed one, but they said, well, you know what? Buy one for $5, we'll throw in the rest with your purchase. So we got that one. We've got this really nice silver one, which complements my gold Hyakushiki one rather nicely. We have a standard black one. We have a hip gear extension for them. Hip gear made a really nice uh, GameCube memory card from what I remember. As well as these two PS1 controllers. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these specifically because I don't really have anything to play them with. Maybe I'll take the shells apart and custom paint them or something. Um, but if anyone wants PS1 controllers, I've got a couple. But, uh, you know, just as I was leaving, uh, the guy turned around and said, oh, I got one more thing you might be interested in. And when he showed it to me, I just knew I couldn't leave without it. Not sure how well it's gonna show up on screen, but uh, we got this big ass Spider-Man triple threat action TV game, interactive motion activated gear. It is a plug and play for pirate gaming. It comes with uh, two web shooters, it comes with this, it comes with like an infrared motion sensor that plugs into your TV. We are doing this for pirate gaming at some point. Uh, again, I do have uh, votes for pirate gaming going up pretty soon, we're close, so you know. If you want to see this in between multi-carts, you know, check out the Patreon, support the show, get your vote in. I am excited about this. When I saw this, I knew. We needed to do this, but it looks like it's like a first person shooty fighty game, plus like 2D fighting, plus like maybe a little bit of platforming. I don't know what this is, but uh, you know, when I got this, the guy who was selling it said, oh man, you are gonna have so much fun with this. You're, you keep this for your kids, your kids are gonna have a blast with this. This looks like an absolute insane time and I am excited. Anyway, uh, I'm going to make a little bit of space, clean out my memory card yet again because my camera's dumb, and then we're gonna get to what I consider to be the big important stuff of this video, the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak. So I will be back in just a sec. All right, we moved some stuff around, although there is one other thing I got at Garage Sale. I can't show it to you, unfortunately, because uh, first of all, it's way too big, but second of all, at present, it is under my cat's big gray furry butt. 
But uh, I went to this one garage sale and I asked him, hey, do you guys have games? And uh, of course they said no because it's this town and no one has games. That's like the one place I found games at. But, um, you know, he had this weird thing like at, at his feet and I looked at it and it, it was folded up. It looked kind of like a briefcase, but I looked at the sides and there was like speakers. And I had an idea what that might be. I didn't want to call too much attention to it because it was a really popular garage sale, like there was like 20, 30 people there. So I just said, hey, how much do you want for that? And he said, that's two bucks. So I, I paid him and I took it home, I unfolded it, and I bought myself a gaming chair for two dollars. Like brand new too, like it, it's an older model, but uh, you know, a couple adapters can fix that. It has like a back massager. It's it's a little weird though because I don't know if you know this about gaming chairs. They're designed to be like rocked backwards to like sit properly. So if you sit straight up, you actually have to lean forward. But um, I, I don't like that about it. But uh, the only other thing I don't necessarily like about it is it's designed to be folded. So when you straighten it, it actually doesn't like have a latch to hold it in place, which is a little awkward. But otherwise, it's it's great. And for two dollars, I mean. That's a stupidly good price. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, next we have a couple of games I got at the Goodwill. Starting with Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, this is one of the uh, maybe dozen, two dozen Wii games I still am looking for now. Well, not anymore, but I'm a huge fan of Donkey Kong Country. It was the Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Countries were like the only time my mom ever spent time with me was just playing those with me. So they're very special to me. And to get this one, uh, that makes me pretty happy. Although I hear you can only play as Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong is the worst character in his own series, which kind of sucks. Dixie's the best character, we all know it. Uh, next we have Infamous and Infamous 2. And on the side it says 750 on a red tag. Now, it was a red tag sale, so I bought these both for a combined total of $1. But these are uh, superhero sandbox things. I, I remember when I first looked at these games, I sort of was debating whether I should get this or Prototype. Uh, out of the two, Prototype is better, but they're both not very good. Seriously, superhero games that don't let you fly kind of suck. It, it's a basic rule. Let your superheroes fly, damn it. Um, but these are made by the people who made Sly Cooper, Sucker Punch. They're also the guys who made the awesome Rocket Robot on Wheels, and I think they kind of have an inverse trajectory. I think that uh, Rocket was sort of the best thing they ever made, and then Sly, and then I think that, uh, well, Infamous is not very good. Uh, next we have a box copy of Rebel Raiders Operation Nighthawk. Again, I, I like, I like, uh, Flying games, especially arcadey flying games. Loves me my afterburner. Uh, this was before I went to that uh, garage sale, obviously. But uh, this is boxed, and it's arcade combat at Mach 2, which sounds interesting. I don't know how many other arcade flight sims I'm missing on the PS2. I know I've got some, um, what is it, uh, Delta Strike, or, or whatever, the Konami one that had all like those weird NES uh, shmup characters as playable characters, which is interesting. Uh, this I got at the same place. It's not a game, but I know about it because of games, so I'm counting it. This is a graphic novel by, as I point to the viewfinder, Doug Tenepal, as I show here. And we would know him as the guy who did Earthworm Jim, and also uh, the Neverhood and Armacrog, which is why this character looks like he fits in. This is a weird thing, though, because it is a bloody, gory... Um, little graphic novel about three cats piloting mechs killing giant dog mechs and insect mechs. And if we show up to the back, you can see some of the characters. Now what's interesting is uh, this particular cat and these two, uh, yeah, they were the inspiration to a Nickelodeon cartoon that has nothing to do with anything else here. It, it has those three cats. And otherwise it has nothing to do with this. It's weird though, but I I had to spend the entire day after I got this, like sitting in a mall just waiting to be picked up because it was uh, way too, uh, the weather was just way too bad. So I sat there and read this good read. Very, very good. Kind of wish he did more of that though. But uh, this was the thing that inspired Nickelodeon's Cat Scratch, even though it has nothing to do with it. Uh, the next two games we got, not the Goodwill, but the Woman in Need store, which actually charges a dollar for games. We got Juiced Racing, 
by Juice Games, whoever those poor people are. Uh, I've never heard of this, but uh, you know, it's a, another game for the inventory. Doesn't hurt my feelings any. As well as SOCOM 2 US Navy SEALs, because SOCOM. I, I've heard lots of good things about these games. Like I said, I'm not into uh, military shooters too much, but it kind of reminds me of an old DOS Navy SEAL game I played a little bit from what it looks like, and that interests me a little bit. So there's that. Uh, next we get sort of into what I would consider the meat and potatoes of this a little bit, um, which is stuff I ordered online, and after these two games, it will be imports I ordered online. Uh, we're going to start with Yakuza Dead Souls. I got uh, really into Yakuza 0. I played it this year, and I loved it so much I wanted to get the rest of the series. Really tricky thing to do, evidently, because pretty much all the PS2 Yakuza games are super rare <laughs> and still very expensive. Uh, the nice thing is there's a collection coming out the day after my birthday, and uh, it's going to have pretty much all of them, so I might have to get myself a birthday present. But it wouldn't have this one, and it wouldn't have two imports from Japan. But uh, we've got uh, this one, which is Yakuza meets a zombie apocalypse, which is very, very interesting. Plus, it's one of two games that plays with my favorite character, Goro Majima. I'm very excited to play this, but once again, my PS3 is kind of unplayable right now because HDCP, thanks again, Sony. But someday, my boy Majima, he's going to shoot up some zombies, and it's going to be great. No, I don't like zombies too much. I think they're very boring characters. All right, next we have the somewhat awkwardly titled Collection of Mana. Uh, I, I think they should have called it the Mana Collection, just to make the name flow a little bit better. Uh, this is a collection of Final Fantasy Adventure, uh, Secret of Mana, and Second in Sets 3. And as they named it Trials of Mana, which I think is an equally awkward name. And if we can get it down here, let's see, down here, I'm not sure how well this will read, but I feel like I need to mention this because I'm all incredulous and stuff. Where does that shadow come from? That is from my lens. Okay. I'm not sure how well that's coming out on screen, but as it says, play the third game in the Manus series for the very first time in English. That, dear internet, is a straight out fabrication. And I can tell you that, let me put that there for just a sec, because this exists. It's existed for 20 years. I've had it for a very long time. This is the very first translation project anyone really got into when emulation became a thing. Secret of Mana 2 has existed for about two, 20 years, and you know, while Square Enix had originally promised this back in like 95, 96, you know, they never delivered until 2019. Well after fans did it themselves. But I own every version of it, so I kind of have to own this too. And uh, you know, it's, it's a fair enough translation. They changed some names around, which I don't care too much for, but it's Sake and Sets 3, and it's, it's a good game. What I don't care so much for is well, first of all, it's a straight port of Secret of Mana, so they didn't tweak any of the problems it had. But more importantly, they went with Final Fantasy Adventure, as opposed to its remake, The Sword of Mana. And The Sword of Mana is, first of all, of the two remakes it's gotten, the better one. And second of all, it is just straight up the one that plays like the Super Nintendo games. You know, like the other two in the collection. So they didn't include that, and they included a crap version of it. So I'm not too thrilled about that. But it was something I picked up. Next are two games I ordered from PlayAsia, because we're getting into imports, baby. Next we have Arcade Love plus Pengo. And like the Trials of Mana, which I've done a little bit of a playthrough of, and I'm thinking about getting more into it. I've had a couple requests. If you want to see more Trials of Mana, let me know. I'm thinking about it. I did a video of this, and this is a collection of four arcade games. You get Arcade Love, which is a WarioWare style arcade challenge. Basically, they give you a bunch of like button mashy, beat em up, platforming sort of challenges. Super fast, they don't explain anything, they just expect you to go. And uh, then they kind of rate you at the end, which is kind of cool. Next, you have Shooting Love, which is basically the same thing but with shmups. It's a shmup skill, skill test. 
very cool idea. Uh, Combat Zeal, which is a neat little way to play independent little shmup challenges. It's it's okay. And then Pengo, which is kind of like Kickle Cubicle meets Bomberman a little bit. It's it, it's the weakest part about the collection, but it's a great collection. It is brand new, however, so it's a little bit pricey, and I don't care for that so much. But you know, it's an import. New imports tend to be expensive. This one wasn't so bad. We have the Ninja Saviors, Return of the Warriors. Likewise, I've made a video about this. This is a remake of one of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time. And it's kind of the definitive version now because it has two extra characters, new animations and new moves and stuff. Every character now has a bunch of super moves, which is really cool. Unfortunately, my boy Kamai Itachi right here, they over-animated him and he makes him look like he's made of jello. And that kind of wrecks it. But, What's really strange about this is, this is a remake of a Super Nintendo game, of course. They added two new characters, Raiden and Yaksha. They are not initially playable. You have to beat the game twice to play as Raiden, and once as Yaksha. And, I mean, if you're going back as a fan of a game to a version of it that has more stuff, you would think that stuff would be available, but it's not. And that's just weird. Also, they didn't fix the final boss, which was just kind of awkwardly designed to begin with. They, they really should have fixed that. And now we get into the more interesting part of this, the awesome, hardcore imports. This is what I've been super excited about, and absolutely why I decided to do this now instead of waiting until the end of the year, because I was just so damn excited about this. So let's get into this. Now, there is a seller on eBay that, uh, when I started this channel, I, I really liked, because he had a lot of rare stuff at really good prices. But the trade-off was that his initial shipping cost was actually really high, it was like 20 bucks. For, for one game, that's just ludicrous. But you could get games there for super, super cheap because people thought, you know, it's like, okay, every game's gonna cost that on top of what you pay for it. You didn't. And I loved that because I could find rare stuff for basically nothing provided I bought a bunch of stuff from him. Now the thing is, over the years, he started at like 20, then the next year he went to like 29, and then after that it was like 35, and it was, it was getting unreasonable. Well, last year it was $75 to ship one item, and, and while they might have sort of smoothed it over afterwards, like, you know, you buy multiple things, that's better, that's still unreasonable. So I stopped ordering from them, and I felt kind of annoyed because they were really my source of really, really good imports. Well, I saw a little while ago that they had dropped it to $15, which is still a little high, but you know, if they went with their old style, I could get behind that. So I decided to buy one or two games from them and, uh, you know, just test the water. See if it was a cumulative thing or if they did combine shipping. Now the thing is, there was a bunch of stuff over the course of a week that I saw that I kind of wanted, so I just sort of put a list down. And uh, I got the first thing I wanted, which was available on the first day. Unfortunately, the other two things I wanted on the first two day, which would have let me test the waters, didn't exactly end up in my possession. So it wasn't until the second day that I got something else, when I bought three things in a row. Because <laughs> it was literally like a couple seconds difference. Uh, but the nice thing was, it was combined shipping, so I was actually able to save a lot of money to get some rare stuff. Uh, so let's go in and see what we got. First and foremost, I got the smallest PlayStation ever, ever created by man. This is a pocket station. This is only available in Japan. It was originally going to be made available for North America, but the thing is, they were so popular in Japan, they couldn't fill demand in Japan to produce worldwide. Apparently, um, Final Fantasy VIII in North America still has connectivity for this, so you can't actually 100% it, which is great. But there's, um, it, it's sort of like a VMU. It's a memory card that also is an LCD game. Uh, for example, I have Metarot R Parts Collection on here. So let's just run through a quick round of Metarot R Parts Collection. And this will gain me points for R Parts Collection, which will let me get parts for Metarot R, which I'm thinking about reviewing since I've kind of gotten into this. Now this isn't exactly the most uh, interesting game of all time. Basically it's autopilot. You pick your Metabot, you pick your opponent and then they just sort of do their own thing automatically. Which, it's not the most interesting game, but I've got one other game that has something for it. There was a game featuring uh, PlayStation mascot, uh, 
the, the cat Taro that people went crazy for because it was like a Tamagotchi sort of thing. Which I think makes a lot of sense for something like this. But uh, you just watch your Metabot beat on the other person and if you win you get a bunch of points. Which you can then buy awesome rare parts that you can't get otherwise. And uh, they don't actually come in this color. Um, my pocket station was actually broken out of the box. I had to repair it. And while it's not 100% fixed, there we go, my little meta boy won a fight. We got 20 points, thank you, Mr. Referee. Um, I, I had to take it apart, and uh, it's actually missing a couple of parts that actually hold this faceplate on. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but right there in the corner, I've got like a little piece of black plastic from a Gundam crammed in there just so this part doesn't fall off. But I decided, you know, if I'm taking this apart, I might as well paint it. So I, I sort of tried to paint through like the yellowed plastic, although this um, white uh, paint is peeling off. And then this red is just sort of like, again, white on red is my custom colors, but uh, this red is uh, nail polish that I'm saving for a special Gundam I'm gonna build sometime down the line. But uh, yeah, I got the smallest PlayStation on demand. And I'm, I'm quite proud of that. And that cost me all of 50 cents because not too many people were bidding on it. Next, we've got one of the last truly good Final Fantasies because, as we all know, six was the last good one. We got a box copy of Final Fantasy V, one of my favorite Final Fantasies, the one that mastered classes and introduced the legendary Blue Mage. Just how good is the Blue Mage? Well, if you happen to know the numbers, you can break the game over your knee in the first fight. Uh, for example, the very first boss, if you avoid every fight up to it and watch the tutorial fight just to get its ability, you can kill in one turn. If you happen to gain a second level by the second boss and use that same ability, you can end it even faster. Blue Mages wreck this game. And I love it. I still want to get the Game Boy Advance version because that's kind of the go-to version, but to get a boxed copy of this is kind of awesome, especially considering this is probably my second favorite Final Fantasy. I love Final Fantasy V. To get a box copy, that's pretty damn cool. Alright, next we have a game I'm a little bit regretting. Uh, this is a little game called Baku Baku Animal on the Sega Saturn. This is a fantastic little puzzle game that kind of reminds me a little bit of like Pack Attack or uh, Panic Bomber. Basically it drops different types of food and you have to line up an animal face with the food in order to get rid of them. It, it's a fun game. Um, about a year ago, I saw a boxed English Saturn copy selling for $15. I should have gotten it, and I regret it to this day, but I got this for one penny. Like that Final Fantasy cart, or uh, box, as well as a lot of things we got. And, uh, you know, what's weird about this is the English version actually lacks any story. They cut it all out. I remember playing the Game Gear or SMS version that had stories, so it was a little weird, but uh, the Saturn version, no story. This version does, though. And it's a fantastic little puzzle game because Sega Saturn is awesome. I'm quite happy to have this. All right, next we have likewise Tetris Plus. I finally have a second copy of Tetris. <laughs> have I broken the Tetris curse? I don't know, but we have Tetris Plus. And this is an interesting game because it's Tetris, but it also has a mode that's sort of like uh, Gus and Oyoyo in reverse. You've got this little uh, explorer guy entering the cave, and uh, the ceiling is going to crush him, so you have to Tetris his way to escape at the bottom. It's, uh, I think it's a pretty neat idea. Um, it, it's more Tetris, so you've got that, but you have this neat little explorer mode, too. I, I think it's a really fun puzzle game because more Tetris is great, but we're not done with puzzle games because we got Puzzle Bobble 4. I actually put a video of this up just a couple of days ago. This is more Bust a Move. I'm actually not super familiar with Bust a Move. I played a little bit of the N64 one in that I rented it for a weekend, saw the opening screen, never pressed start, and just never played it. <laughs> it, it didn't look like my kind of game, and it's a puzzle game. It's really not, but it's a great puzzle game. And it's kind of like Tetris with the Bubble Bobble characters, kind of. It's uh, it, it's neat. I like this game a lot, although I'm awful at it. Just, just awful. And that cost me a penny too. Like I said, a lot of this stuff just 
no one bid on, which is great for me. Next is one of the more peculiar choices, and once this is over, I'm actually about to review it, I think. We have Monster Farm Jump, as, as it says on the side. This was released in English as Monster Rancher Hopabout, and I saw an English copy of this when my girlfriend was here, and I was kicking myself for not getting it, but they were just asking for too much. This cost me a penny, which is, again, less money than what my country even considers standard currency anymore. So uh, I, I had to get it. But, you know, Monster Rancher or Monster Farm was this great game where you could uh, plug in CDs to unlock different monsters and have them fight in sort of a semi-RPG-ish manner. It was kind of a hit to the point where you get, like, kids who love nothing but rap music asking for, like, CDs of country music for Christmas just to see what different monsters they get. Well, their response to coming up with a new idea to keep their game series fresh well, you know, you could do the Pokemon thing where you just add more monsters, give them a different experience, even though it's the exact same. Well, this game says, you know, the people who made Pokemon are absolute idiots. We got this down pat. Pogo Stick Racing. Hell yeah, Pogo Stick Racing. This, this game is absolutely baffling that it exists. Weirdly enough, there's a game on the Switch that is literally this just reskinned. I, I think it's called, um... Uh... Something Magical Girl Jump. You could find it. I think it's $15. I'm interested in it just because it's the exact same game. And I'm running out of battery again, so I will be back in just a sec. Alright, uh, hopefully this is going to be the last chunk of this. I I'm not sure necessarily, though. Uh, next we have Purumi Purumi. This is, from what I can tell, a budget dungeon crawler RPG type of thing. Um... I could not get very far into this. This I actually tried to make a gameplay video for, and uh, this was actually requested by the Discord, but I just could not get very far yet, and I'm gonna try again sometime soon. But uh, you run around, and I guess you have to like morph your little rabbi pal to turn into like a bridge and stuff, as, as shown in this picture right here. I could not figure out the transformations or anything whatsoever, but uh, it's interesting, and it costs nothing, so why not? Uh, next we have Ride Gear Guy Brave and from what I can tell this is like a 2D beat-em-up meets like RPG type of thing it, it feels like a budget title but it looks really cool and like everything else I've paid here it costs less than what my country even considers to be currency so you know uh, a mech beat-em-up brawler type of thing that's not a bad idea and for one penny it's going to be a video at the very least, but it looks very good. Alright, next we have a game called City Crisis. And that's all I know about it. Uh, this was one of those things, uh, like uh, Purumi Purumi and Ride Gear Guy Brave, it was uh, one of those things that just, in between actual purchases I wanted to make, it was one penny and it was just going up, so why not? Um, but it looks like an interesting little budget title where you fly a helicopter around putting out fires and rescuing people. It looks fun, and... For basically nothing, you know, fun is definitely appreciated. Now next is a stack of five games. Five little Famicom titles. These guys right here. Uh, these grand total cost me five dollars. I'm not gonna lie, I bought these for one of them. <laughs> but let's take a look and see what we got. First we have uh, Makai Mura, which is of course uh, Ghosts and Goblins. And I know a lot of people like Ghosts and Goblins. I don't so much. I, I like the um, Red Aramir games, though. I, I'd like to get the others. But, uh, you know, first uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Great game. Not very good at it. I think it's a little poorly designed. But, you know, not bad. Not bad. Next we have Gyrodyne. Uh, I, I played this for a little bit on Pirate Gaming, if you want to see more of what this is. But you play like a little helicopter flying around trying to bomb things and then get back onto a boat. I didn't really care much for that at all. Next is a game that's completely worthless to me. It's one of the two Saint Seiya games. Um, one of them is a platformer cross with an RPG, the other is just a straight on RPG. I think this is the platforming RPG, but they're both pretty much unplayable unless you can read Japanese, which I can't. Maybe I'll get my girlfriend to play them since she can as my cat pops into the box of stuff. Next we have Minovation Saga. Now this I didn't even see in the um, the um, picture. And, and maybe you understand better than I do how eBay works, but 
You know, this was one of those pictures where you couldn't enhance to actually see what was in it. Like, I could see the thing I wanted, I could see those strings. I didn't know what this is. This is actually an RPG I've wanted to play for a very long time. So this is a pleasant surprise. And there's a nice translation out there, so I'm gonna have to go out and play this one. But finally, we have the big mystery card that I want to play. We have Joy Mech Fights, and I've got a gameplay video of this coming up soon. This is one of the few really good fighting games on the Famicom. It is fast-paced, it is fluid, it is really, really nice. Again, on the Famicom, there really aren't any good fighting games. This is one of them, though. And it stars our boy Sukupon, which you recognize from Smash Brothers, or what that matters. But that doesn't matter, because what you get is an excellent fighting game. And that's what I wanted out of that little bundle, and that alone made it worth it. Okay, so like I said, there was five really big titles. Uh, there, there was items I wanted, and there were five really big items I wanted. Uh, these, these were like the things I absolutely had to go after, and I kind of saved them for last for, from this little pickup. So first, we have Umehara Kawase Shun. This is weird. It, it, usually on these games, it has one side in English and one in Japanese, but no. Japanese on both sides. Anyway, this is the second Umehara Kawase game. You run around, you platform using your awesome grappling hook uh, rubber fishing line thingy, and you fight deadly, deadly sea life that wants to eat you. And, uh, you know, it, it's more Umehara Kawase. I'm a big fan of Umehara, so that ain't too bad for me. That works on my collection of Umehara. Now I just need the original and, and you know, the other ones. All right, now this one is something I'm pretty excited about. We have the Vampire Collection. This is a collection of Darkstalkers games. Now I know what you're saying. Fury, there's already one of those. It's on the Xbox Live, it's on PS3, and you're kind of right, but not quite. It's actually Vampire or Darkstalkers 2 and 3. This one not only has more than that, it actually has additional content. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And yes, there were a 4th and 5th. Darkstalkers games. They are only available in console in this collection. You got Vampire, Vampire Hunters, Vampire Savior, Vampire Savior 2, and Vampire Hunters 2. The whole collection, plus an art gallery and some secret stuff. That is really, really cool. I love Darkstalkers, and uh, you know, this is a great little collection. What's interesting about it, though, is, as you can see, it's sort of the, the box art is scrunched into this white box. This is one of those, like, um, greatest hits boxes. I hate stuff like that. Uh, be because it just looks bad on a shelf. Not necessarily the Japanese one, because you can't tell, but usually it's got, like, a giant green stripe or, like, a yellow stripe. It just stands out and looks ugly. They had a copy of this that was the non-greatest hits version. It was selling several days later, but at the point where this sold, it was already retailing for about four or five times what this was. I, I ended up spending like $10 on this, whereas they wanted like 100 for the regular one. I hate Grace Hits box art. I will take that savings though. Uh, next we have something that will interest probably no one, but uh, we've got Pachi Para 11, Pachinko Paradise 11. Now if you're importing, you're gonna come into like a million and one Pachinko games and horse racing games and Mahjong games. It, it comes with the territory. This one I actually wanted to get though. I believe it was uh, Game Escape who made a video on Pachinko games and uh, really good video you should go watch. But this was one he showed and uh, this was more than just a Pachinko game. It was like an RPG tied with a Pachinko game. And that came across as interesting to me. So I, I really wanted to get it and this one specifically because it looked like a lot of fun. But also, you know, you kind of have to get a Pachinko game at some point just for the cultural experience. But, you know, they're actually getting to be collector's items because there are no Pachinko games anymore. You can only get them uh, through an app now, as I understand. They stopped kind of producing them after the PS3. So this is actually quite collectible, apparently. And, you know how I said there was five things? Well... The thing is, the biggest thing I wanted, they had three copies of, I lost every single goddamn one. So I saw this last thing, that was the final thing that I really wanted that was up for sale. And I said, okay, screw it. I've lost this one thing I wanted so many times, I'm just gonna put all the money I was gonna put into that, and this, and I'm gonna try and get it. And I did. 
we got a boxed limited edition of Melty Blood Actress again. And this is complete with the soundtrack, the game, the really nice uh, way that the box opens like a clamshell. This actually sells for a lot of money. I, I found out after I bought this that uh, you can buy the regular Melty Blood for about $100. You can buy the limited edition, which is like the regular version but with the limited edition box, for about $10 more. But to get like the actual one in the proper box with the soundtrack and all the extra stuff, that is between three and $500. I didn't spend anywhere near that. I didn't even spend a tenth of that, but I really wanted this. Uh, it's a fighting game based on a visual novel, which seems like the weirdest combination of things you could ever get other than maybe a first-person shooter from a visual novel. But, uh, you know, it, it's a really well-received fighting game, and I'm excited to play this. I, I'm getting a little bit more into fighting games, I think, so I'm, I'm excited to get this. Now, that was from that order, but there was one other order I made from this person because I saw that they had something I really, really wanted for way cheap. And I'm seeing a red flashing battery logo. I hope we don't cut. Uh, I apologize if we do. But, uh, they had a copy of Ryo Ga Gokutsu Ishin on the PS3 for one penny. Remember how I said I was missing two import Yakuza games? Well, this is one. This is Yakuza if Kazuma Kiryu was a samurai. Unfortunately, it's on the PS3. There is a PS4 version, but it costs an absolute fortune. Actually, so does this one for the most part, but uh, I got this one for a good price. Now I just gotta get my PS3 working, and uh, I'm gonna get that in me and have an absolute blast with more Yakuza. Now, of course, because I've already bought something from them, I kinda had to buy some more stuff just to sort of make the purchase worthwhile. So next we have, uh, I believe this is called Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan. It's based on a, a uh, anime that I'm not remotely familiar with, but it is a 2D fighting game that looks kind of vaguely Smash-ish. It looks like a fun time and it cost me a penny, so. Uh, an extra little game to add to my collection. That's interesting, absolutely. Uh, now next we have import Wii games, which I've been told, I, I want to say it was by Nico, who said, you know, it's actually really easy to run import Wii games, you just need like an SD card with two files, so I got these for pretty cheap. Uh, this was the first import Wii game I'd ever heard of, and because of that I wanted it to be my first one, and they had it so I bought it. We got Captain Rainbow, which is a Nintendo, like, 3D platformer thing that has, like, a ton of cameos with other characters. Like, you've got, like, Birdo over here. You've got the guy from Mysterious Marasme Castle. You've got, uh, uh, Lip from Panel to Pawn. And you're basically some kind of superhero guy running around. I'm so excited to play this. I just gotta figure out how to get imports onto my Wii, and I am all over that. And following that up, we have SD Gundam. Scad Hammers. I actually just heard about this game recently, but it looks kind of like a Diablo meets Bomberman sort of thing, and that looks really cool. I love this box art too, because it looks like original Gundam, like, uh, prototype, like, um, promotional imagery. It, it looks like hand, uh, pencil crayon and everything. It looks great. And of course, you've got awesome stuff on the back, sort of exploring the world, destroying stuff with your... Gundam of choice. There's there's apparently a ton of different Gundams in here as well, which is kind of cool. Very excited about this. And let's not end that Gundam train just yet, because we have... And the recording was stopped automatically. Thanks, you crappy camera. Anyway, we have Gundam Lost War Chronicles Limited Box. I'm getting very close to owning every Gundam game on the PS2. Still need to get that uh, really expensive MS Saga game, but uh, uh, this one has the Gym Sniper 2, which automatically means I want to buy it, but it also has the uh, Blue Destiny and the Ifri Custom, which is one of my favorite mobile suits of all time. And it plays kind of similarly to the, um, what is it, uh, 0083 game on the PS3 I played a little while ago. It's a third person shooter that uh, actually puts weight on your mobile suit, so it actually looks interesting. I'm really excited to get that. All right, next is a game I've wanted to play for a very long time. Could never get an English copy, so I got a Japanese one until I can get an English one. Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Veil. Vale. Uh, like I said, never had a PS1, didn't have a PS2 until like 2010, so I kind of missed out on Klonoa, who I still think is like the most natural character who should ever appear in Smash for what it's worth. But I did have the Wii remake, which unfortunately got stolen from me, and I'm sad about that because I really want to copy again. But I had a blast with that game, and because of that, I wanted to play the sequel so bad. And when I saw this on sale for about two bucks, 
I, I had to jump on it because I love Klonoa, even though I don't know too much about it. Next we have a sealed, although the package is cracked, I'm pretty sure this is otherwise brand new though. Because you have Klonoa too, you gotta get Klonoa. And I begin to wonder the dreams I can't remember when I wake in the morning, where in the world did they go? Truly an important question in this game and also really gorgeous box art. But this is a fantastic 2.5D platformer. If you can play PS1 games and you can download this from the PS3, you should. Um, there's also a Wii version, which I recommend you get because it looks a little less janky and a little bit more modern. But it is a fantastic and very simple platformer. I love Klonoa. I want to play a hell of a lot more of these games. Again, I'm going to try and get an English copy, but until then. Next we have a good old staple in my importing, Ganbare Gomon. This is the very first PS1 Gomon game. And instead of playing as Gomon, Yai, Abisumaru, and Sasuke, you get Gomon, Abisumaru, some spaceman, and a caveman who looks suspiciously like Sasuke. Is a 2D platformer, as I understand, although it has sort of like 2.5D elements, sort of like Gomon's Great Adventure. I'm, I'm playing with the shadows a little bit, I apologize. Maybe I can just tilt it a little bit to be better, maybe. I hope so. Anyway, this is a uh, Gomon game. I'm excited. I have half the PS1 Gomon games at this point, which is pretty exciting. Uh, next, we have the first thing I actually won in this set. And then I jumped on Yakuza because, you know, you got to make sure you've got two things at least. This is Topolo, and calling this a game is not really accurate. Um, basically, as it says, it's a digital toy. Uh, basically, you get these little Lego blocks, and you get to build a creature out of them. Sort of like the Spore Creature Creator, and all the Lego blocks are labeled like foot, head, whatever. And then he throws them into a situation to try and see how this creature works. It's very much the Spore Creature Creator, just on the PS1, really. Weird thing, it didn't cost much, it cost a penny, why not? Uh, next we have the only other game I have that works with the Pocket Station, a game that will make my brother very jealous, the Capcom JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fighting game. Now this game is actually available digitally on the PS3 and Xbox 360, except it's been delisted and that's why I bought this. I, I really wanted to play that, because like I said, I'm getting kind of into a fighting game mood, even though I'm awful at them. And knowing that I couldn't get them and I saw this one for five bucks, I just said, well, I really kind of want this. And ooh, look, Pocket Station support. Yes, please. Although I can't figure out how to get the game on there yet. I, I think I have to balance my Pocket Station saves a little better, even though there should be enough room on it for it. But uh, it's a great fighting game, if nothing else. All right, next we have Super Robot Shooting. It's a third-person rail shooter starring the Super Robot War blokes. But I know what you're thinking, there's no Gundam on here, what the hell? Well, it turns out, in the tiny little corner, you can see the new Gundam. It's all shrunk down for some reason. I don't know why they made the Gundam so small in here. I'm a little bit annoyed about that. But uh, it, it looks like a pretty uh, low quality um, rail shooter. But, uh, you know, for a penny, why not? Plus, it means that I get more super robots and it's not a strategy game, which means I can probably play it without a translation. Alright, next we have... I believe this game is called Guru Tops. And this is a RTS featuring cavemen. Um, you sort of create your cavemen, then he sort of wanders around. You have to have him, like, kill dinosaurs and, like, get crops and stuff. Looks interesting. This one is actually brand new. Like, you can still see, like, the, the seal on it. It's pretty cool. I don't know a lot about it, but it looks interesting. And now we've got the final chunk of this thing, as my cat sleeps quietly in the box next to me. Uh, like the Famicom games, this was a bundle of Super Famicom games that I bought for basically one game. There, there was actually quite a few bundles of uh, Super Famicom games. There was one that had another game I wanted, but they wouldn't uh, swap them out. Someday I will get Nangoku Shonen Papua-kun, but uh, I bought this for Alkahest. As a fan of the Super Nintendo and as a fan of RPGs, I kind of had to get this game. Uh, it's not that great, honestly, but it's an interesting little action RPG type of thing, and it means one more Super Nintendo RPG I get to play, which I'm really excited about. Um, next we have Mystic Arc. This is actually the sequel and the final game in the trilogy following Brain Lord. 
which was following Seventh Saga, which is a game I still need to find. Uh, and unlike Brain Lord, this game plays exactly like Seventh Saga, so it's Seventh Saga 2. Still never played Seventh Saga, but it looks interesting, and I'm getting pretty excited to play that. And with a minuscule three games left, the battery fails. All right, we got very little time left, so let's let's try and finish this up proper. Uh, next in that little bundle we got Wonder Project J. Now, I did mention that I didn't exactly get every game I wanted out of the first set. I wanted to get a box copy of this because my box copy of the sequel was kind of lonely. But this is a Super Nintendo game, so I can apply a patch and translate it. Uh, this is kind of like a point-and-click adventure meets a child raising simulator. You get this little robot boy and you have to sort of teach him right from wrong and a bunch of different stuff to get through like a point-and-click adventure world. It's a, it's a neat game. Next we have Populous. I believe this was a Peter Molyneux game. Uh, I don't know anything about Populous, honestly. But uh, yeah, I, I think my girlfriend kind of swears by it, so that's kind of nice. And finally, we get a game I know nothing about, Erathlite. Uh, this, I, I want to say, is a strategy game, so I probably won't get very far, but... Uh, you know, I, I got this for Alkahest and Game Wonder Project J, and Mystic Arc was just a nice bonus. Anyway, that has been Import Palooza, <laughs> including the smallest PlayStation ever, and some great pickups, and, and a few disappointments from Garage Sales. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, just for a moment, let's give a bit of a round of applause for this little guy, who's actually been nice and quiet this entire time, which is surprising. That's a good cat. He's usually very loud. Good for you, Lloyd. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, you know, if you want to see more, I've got a playlist of more of these videos, and uh, you know, you might want to see other stuff I've made by subscribing. If you really want to help me out, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which in this case is try and find really good deals, which aren't necessarily easy to do, so helping to fund this show definitely makes life easier for me. Plus, you get yourself on the Discord where we can talk about all our new acquisitions, as well as getting to vote on different games that I get to try as well as uh, pirate games and just you know discussing how awesome some of this stuff is anyway from this little guy over here and me that's a good cat we'll see you next time peace out internet